June 1967. Middle East. Tensions have been running high for weeks. Egypt's President Nasser had sent in a couple of his divisions to Syria as a symbolic show of Arab unity against Israeli provocation. Stakes are very high on all sides. Egypt has rearmed itself with the help of the Soviets, rebuilt its air force with the latest Soviet-built supersonic mix. The Israeli propaganda machine propagated the myth that the nation faced danger of extermination. Israel was secretly preparing to attack the Arab armies for over a decade. Well armed with the latest Western-made military equipment, they have built a formidable air force with French-made state-of-the-art supersonic Mirage fighters and other fighters and bomber aircrafts. The whole world is watching nervously. And then it happens. Early morning on the 5th of June, Israel makes a preemptive strike on Egypt and delivers a devastating blow. The Egyptian air force is all but wiped out on the ground. Their air bases, runways and facilities lay in ruins from heavy aerial bombings by the invading Israeli Air Force. NASA's MiGs don't even get a chance to take off. They are bombed to pieces on the ground. The Arab sides lost more than 450 combat aircraft that day. Without the necessary air cover, Egyptian and Syrian armies were doomed and at the mercy of the Israeli Air Force. After neutralizing the Egyptian Air Force, Israel turns its eyes on another of its neighbors, Jordan. Jordan only had a batch of 24 British-made Hawker Hunters to defend its airspace, and not even enough pilots to fly these subsonic jets. After wiping out relatively better equipped Syrian Egyptian Air Forces, Israel is super confident and it's just a matter of time to annihilate Jordanian Air Force and bring Jordan to its knees. So the next wave of Israeli aircraft arrive over the Jordanian sky around midday of June 5th. Should be an easy task for the French-built Mystères and Super Mystères to finish the job and go home. But then the most unexpected thing happens. A young Pakistan Air Force pilot, Flight Lieutenant of the then East Bengal origin, had arrived in Jordan six months earlier to train their pilots. Fearing the breakout of a war, the ill-prepared Jordanians asked Saiful Azam and his fellow officer, Sarwar Shad, whether they would volunteer to defend Jordan. These young Pakistanis agreed, and Israeli pilots were to get the shock of their life in that attack. This 26-year-old flight lieutenant was Azam. Saiful Azam. Azam's first combat training started in the USA in late 50s, and in April 1961, he was awarded Top Gun at the Luke Air Force Base, Arizona. He had finished top of his class in strafing and bombing training at Luke. Over the six days of one-sided mayhem, he would only get two opportunities to take on the Israeli combat pilots in the sky, and he would make history. Azam and his four-plane fighter group managed to take off just seconds before the Israelis attacked the Mafraq Air Base and engaged them in dogfights. Azam shot down an Israeli Mustair 4 in a flash. His victim crashed to his death at the perimeter fence of Mafraq Base. He gave chase to two more Israeli fighters fleeing at full speed. He caught up with one and shot it down. His wingman, Issan Shurdom, also shot down another Mustair in the same fight before they landed at Amman Airport. The Israelis lost half of their six-plane formation in the single attack. Mafraq airbase was damaged so badly that uh, the remaining aircraft, including Azam himself, they landed in Amman International Airport. <laughs> when Azam landed at Amman, he basically ordered the ground crew to refuel his plane and reload his guns. He wanted to fly back up in the sky. Within minutes, the Israeli Air Force was there and they destroyed the rest of the aircrafts on the ground in the Amman International Civilian Airport, including a, a UN aircraft that was parked next to one of the combat aircrafts. So Jordan lost its entire Air Force, most of it on the ground, with one exception, 
which is uh, Azam and his fighting group, they, he was able to shoot down two aircrafts. As a matter of fact, his fighting group is the only one who had some success against the Israelis because they were able to face them in the air. Majority of the aircrafts were destroyed by the Israelis as planned on the ground. So without having any aircraft, the King Hussein bin Talal decided to um, send his pilots to Iraq. Iraqi Air Force was flying the same, using the same aircraft, the Hawker Hunter. Azam was transferred to Iraq the next day. He was asked to defend Iraq from the Israeli air attack now. So he was again in action on the morning of the 7th of June. And the most unlikely incident took place that morning. Azam shot down a supersonic Mirage and one Israeli Vatur bomber. Israeli fighter pilots had finally found their match in Saiful Azam. On the seventh morning, we were, uh, I, I was woken up by one pilot. He said, I don't know anybody who was volunteer. I didn't know if I was going to go to the mission. I was going to select your other three partners. I was going to go to Jordan and go to the mission. And then I was going to go to the pilot. I was going to go to the mission. We were going to go to H3. H3 was a big squadron. We were going to go to the mission. You look, look around for the thing. We saw four aircraft, bounced two on one and then two on the other side. There I shot down the third, uh, third aircraft, which is the Mirage. When I shot the Mirage down, my number four, number two was Hussam. Uh, uh, shot them. He gave a call, now sir, you have got the uh, party. Said, yes, now I've got it confirmed. Um, Azam, he was still in business. He wasn't celebrating because he spotted a Vator 2,000 feet below. So in order to keep uh, his, uh, this enemy in full view, while um, the Mirage exploded, by the way, the uh, pilot, his name was Gideon Dror, uh, he ejected out of the Mirage and he was descending with his parachute. Well, Azam spotted this Vator a couple thousand feet below. He did a, um, which we call a split S maneuver in aerobatics terminology, uh, where you invert your aircraft completely and you uh, go through a motion where you very quickly uh, lose altitude and get behind the enemy aircraft. Uh, with this maneuver, within seconds, he positioned himself or his hunter behind this Vator at a very sp high speed, around 450 knots, where he was closing in on this very large aircraft. And he got so close to the plane that he was hesitant whether he should pull the trigger because he would be in the debris field if the plane starts falling apart. But he decided to do it anyways. So he shot this much larger bomber uh, with his cannon and the plane started falling apart and Azam really had to pull away. Even then, his aircraft was hit with debris from the Vator. In the Six-Day War, Israel lost only 46 aircraft, as opposed to over 450 Arab aircraft. Azam alone shot down four in the air. For his achievements, Azam received gallantry awards from Jordan and Iraq. Very nice of him that he never boasted about these awards. Uh, whenever I met him, uh, he never mentioned, or even, even as a story, he did not tell uh, what he did, what all he did. Uh, I think he was very modest. Inside he was uh, humble. It was only, it is this also a uh, uh, good leadership quality to be modest. I remember Saiful Azam as a cadet at Pakistan Air Force Academy in Salpur, uh, where I was an instructor at that time. And uh, I was very proud of Saiful Azam because he was a tall cadet, very athletic. Two years prior to this, he was in action at another front. In September 1965, Azam was a young flight lieutenant based at Lahore, West Pakistan. War broke out between India and Pakistan. 
Hassan was part of the ground attack team of the Pakistan Air Force. He and his fellow pilots took part in numerous sorties against Indian Army and destroyed many of the enemy tanks and heavy artillery. On his way back from one of these missions, Azam and his group came under attack by Indian Air Force jets. In the dogfight that followed, Azam shot down one Indian Air Force Nat. He received Pakistan's third highest military award for this. I'm not going for a strike in Lahore sector. The Lord, army was coming from India. They were taking a stop for them. On the way, we were bounced by four nets. And they were also Indian uh, cannon aircraft, bombing the aircraft. Because when we got out, we had to punch our tanks and be ready for the attack. We can uh, look to the right, look to the left. The rest of the uh, provision members could not see it. Dusty Chilo. So I'm going to say, follow me. I was number four. So I followed, they followed me. I went first fired on the tanks. Then I then put the rockets on the next. So they were very happy. So that's why he wrote. So our spotting our target was so good that many, many missions were successful because of that. So Azam holds the world record of flying for four different air forces. Pakistan, Jordan, Iraq and Bangladesh. He also scored aerial kills against two different air forces, and he received military honors from three different countries, Pakistan, Jordan, and Iraq. Another world record. As far as we know, that he was the highest military award holder in East of Suez Canal. So to get a name and fame of that nature, there is none to match him. Certainly, professionally, he was excellent. It was known in Pakistan Air Force. And uh, he was an example and a person and a professional to be followed during his period in Pakistan Air Force. Uh, we, as Bengalis, of course, he from being from Bangladesh, at that time, of course, East Pakistan and a Bengali. We were very proud of him. And whenever we used to meet him, we used to respect him as such and try to learn as many things in the professional side as possible. And he was very candid. And because he was excellent in profession, so he had no problem in delivering his war experience and other military flying technique to us and we are so proud of it. In 1965, when he shot down the fallen nap of the Indian Air Force, it was absolutely incredible. He was fighting a, a far superior aircraft, and it was only his, his pilot skills that managed him to do that. And then when I heard it, in 1967, he was uh, flying in, in Jordan, to teaching the Jordanian um, pilots, when the Israelis did the surprise attack in the Six Day War. I mean, because they totally annihilated the Egyptian aircraft on the ground. And so he, he volunteered and was flying for Jordan and managed to shoot down two misstairs and damage a third aircraft. Absolutely superb. And not only that, he then went off to, into uh, Iraq uh, and after a very, very short period of time, literally hours, was back in the aircraft again and fighting a cutting edge aircraft, a Mirage. I mean, the Mirage was still being used in, by frontline troops in 1982 by the Argentinians. Absolutely superb aircraft. And here he was in the 1949 Hawker Hunter, and he shot down one Mirage and a Volta Bomber as well over, over Iraq. Absolutely incredible feat. I think the guy should be should be knighted if he was British. He was absolutely wonderful. Well, I have known Lukut uh, Azam for almost uh, 50 years from his childhood. He's always a very energetic and uh, cheerful, witty, uh, full of. Uh, life. I remember once he was, uh, when we were having our school day in Lord Topa, he visited us and, uh, you know, we met and uh, he was so encouraging that that year I did not get any trophy on our school annual uh, competition. I ran short of a few points so, 
And I told him that, sorry, this year I did not get any trophy. I was uh, very close to winning one, but, but he was so encouraging. He said to me, uh, you're not supposed to win trophy in every year. As long you participate and you do well, that's what is expected out of um, uh, any uh, good person. And that was very encouraging because after all these years, this story comes back to my mind that, you know, I was feeling low, I was feeling down because I was not receiving any trophy and he was there. Instead of putting me down, he encouraged me that it is in, in the participation of different competitions that you enjoy, not necessarily you have to win a trophy. So it shows that uh, right from the beginning that the gentleman had that uh, power to encourage people. He was he's a very positive guy. Uh, people, when they come and meet him, they go back having received something uh, that will encourage him throughout his life. For his lifetime achievement, United States honored him by awarding him as a living eagle in the year 2000. He was one of only 22 people to achieve this rare status in that year. The United States Air Force holds an event at their premier training facility and Air University in Maxwell Air Force Base, Alabama, every year. It's called the Gathering of Eagles. It's held by an organization called Gathering of Eagles Foundation. It's been taking place annually since 1982. In this event, every year, they honor the prominent personalities in aviation. It could be fighter pilots, astronauts, aviation engineers, or other pioneers. President George W. Bush Sr., um, John Glenn, Chuck Yeager, Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, they're all honored as eagles. Um, in the year 2000, uh, Azam was invited to join this event as one of the 22 living eagles of the world. Um, this event took place between June 8 and June 12. This was a great honor for Azam. Uh, I worked uh, with Azam closely for the last three years, uh, writing his biography. I was uh, fortunate enough to spend some time with him um, at his office, at his home. Uh, I find him, as a, aside from a fighter pilot, I find him to be a very decent human being. Yes, he is well respected amongst his peers, amongst other fighter pilots of Bangladesh, Pakistan, Jordan and Iraq and other parts of the world. But what amazes me is he is respected by everyone else. Uh, amongst his staff at his Taka office, uh, people of every rank, uh, starting from a director of his company all the way down to his chauffeur or the guards. They love him, they revere him, they respect him, and they cherish him. This is a rare quality in a human being, and I'm just not saying it, but this is what I have experienced. People respect him, love him, because of the way Azam is. Azam has deep faith and conviction in human qualities. He, um, he has the leadership quality where he can bring out the best in a person. And throughout Azam's life, he had left this good impression amongst just about everyone that came in touch with him, got to know him, spent a little time with him. This is a remarkable quality in a human being, uh, which stands out above and beyond his other successes in life. In March 1971, Pakistani army started attacking innocent civilians in Bangladesh, which was then known as East Pakistan. Azam, being a true patriot, always sided with the good guys. In 1965, he defended Pakistan against its enemy. Now he felt that injustice was being done against his own ethnic group, that is, the Bengalis. So he prepared to escape from Pakistan 
and take part in the liberation war of Bangladesh. But fate intervened. Azam was arrested by the Pakistani army intelligence and disarmed and taken a prisoner. আমার হাজবেন্ডের তখন উনি স্কোয়াড্রন লিডার তার ফ্রেন্ড শেসুল চৌধুরী সে এসে তার কোর্সমেট এসে সে এসে তাকে বলল যে আজম তোমাকে আমার সাথে যেতে হবে তখন সে তাকে নিয়ে গেল এক কাপড়ে সেই যে নিয়ে গেল তারপরে আর কোনো খবর নেই তারপরে বিশ দিন হয়ে গেল একুশ তখনও কোনো খবর নেই সে আছে না বেঁচে আছে না মারা গেছে কেউ কিছুই বলে না আমাকে পরে আমি করাচিতে মণিপুরে ওখানকার বেস কামান্ডারের সাথে দেখা করতে গেলাম বেস কামান্ডার ছিল না তার ওয়াইফকে জিজ্ঞেস করলাম যে আমার হাজব্যান্ডকে আপনারা কী করেছেন সে কি বেঁচে আছে না মারা গেছে সেটা আমাকে বলেন অন্তত আপনারা সে বলল আমি কিছুই বলতে পারি না তারপরে নভেম্বরের পনেরো তারিখে আমার ই শুরু হয় পেন শুরু হয় তখন তারা আমাকে হাসপাতালে নিয়ে নিয়ে গেল আমার দেবর ফাকরুল রাজম ওইখানে সেদিন আমাকে সারা দিন ফেলে রেখে দিল তার পরের দিন ষোলোই অগাস্ট ষোলোই ডিসেম্বরের বিকালবেলা আমার মেয়েটা হলো হ্যাঁ মেয়েটা হওয়ার পরে এই বুকের মধ্যে ঘর ঘর করছিল তা আমি সিস্টারদের ডেকে বললাম যে বাচ্চাটা এরকম বুকের মধ্যে বলে কেউ না কিছু না পরে রাত্রেবেলা আমার কাছ থেকে মেয়েকে নিয়ে গেল সকালবেলায় আমি উঠে মুখ ধুচ্ছি এর মধ্যে সিস্টার এসে বললো তোমার মেয়ে মারা গেছে তারপরে শুরু হয়ে গেল আপনার যুদ্ধ যুদ্ধের সময় আমরা তো এই ঠান্ডার মধ্যে ট্রেন চে ছোটো ছোটো দুইটা বাচ্চা নিয়ে আমরা ট্রেন চে থাক রাত্রেবেলা চলে যেতাম মরে পড়ে খুবই বম্বিং হতো তারপরে পরে যখন আপনি যুদ্ধ শেষ হলো তখন আমার হাজব্যান্ডকে লোয়ার টোপার থেকে ফেরত পাঠানো হলো ফেরত পাঠানো হওয়ার পরে তারপরে আমরা সেভেন্টি টুর এপ্রিলে বোধ হয় আমরা পেশোয়ার আমাদের হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ ক্যাম্পে পাঠিয়ে দেওয়া হলো হোয়াটসঅ্যাপ ক্যাম্পে থেকে আমরা সেভেন্টি ফোরের নয় জানুয়ারি ঢাকাতে ফিরত আসি অ্যাট দ্য এন্ড অফ দ্য ওয়ার্ডিভ বাংলাদেশ এক্সেপশনালি হাম্বল অ্যান্ড প্লেস ডাউন হিজ ওন অ্যাচিভমেন্টস বাট হিজ ফ্যান্স আইডলাইজ হেম ইন ওয়াই হি ইজ অ্যাভ দ্য রিজনাল পলিটিক্স অফ বাংলাদেশ অ্যান্ড পাকিস্তান A lot of Pakistanis admire him and treat him as their own. Arabs are grateful to him and are in awe of him. The fact that the United States awarded him Living Eagle says it all. <laughs>